Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I am Borderwise, and welcome back to From the Depths and another tier list, which is the second one I've done. Because somebody suggested the other day that uh, I do one on the simple weapons in the game, which is quite a good idea, actually, because they tend to vary quite a bit, and they're almost like, like separate little categories of weapons within the simple uh, weapons options. So, here we go, tier list, simple weapons in front of the depth. So, we're going to start off in F tier, and surprise to basically no one, uh, drills. D drills suck. Drills are just really bad. Um, they're nothing but cons, basically. Like, and, like, they are overly complex for what is supposed to be a simple weapon. Like, look at the amount of components here. It's eight components for what should be just one, considering that every single other simple weapon is just one block. Um, it consumes power, and it's a melee weapon that is actually kind of fragile. So, you look at the main... A drill component. Actually, look at all of them, really. Their health is kind of low for something that you are going to be smashing into uh, enemies. Like, these drill bit, large drill bits are actually... They have a lot of health, but the stuff immediately behind them uh, is kind of fragile, like... Yeah, like 60 armor, great, but 900 health. Uh, the, the torque amplifier has terrible stats for something that is supposed to be durable. 400... Uh, health, 20 armor, the main drill piece itself has less armor than metal does, so... And actually less armor, I think, than... Yeah, than a 2 meter metal beam. So no, drills are awful, and one of the main reasons that uh, I can say that with confidence is that in my first tier list, I actually completely forgot about them. Like, not just, like, the simple weapon drills, but also the steam drills. I just plain forgot they exist because no one uses them. Like. You hardly see any faction craft. I don't think there are any faction craft whatsoever which use the simple weapon drills. And only a very few which use the steam drills. In fact, I think it's only Onyx and Watchcraft which do that. So, firmly F tier, they suck. They don't bother with them. But they're not alone down in F tier. There is uh, something else. And that is the 50 caliber machine gun. For, um, like, looking at the stats, like, it initially doesn't look too bad. Like, uh, the pro is definitely that it's cheap, and its reload time is pretty good for, uh, these kind of, like, auto cannon uh, kinetic symbol weapons. Uh, the problem is the damage. Its damage is, like, really terrible. It does almost nothing. It does, uh, 120 kinetic damage with an armor piercing of 10, which means it does max damage to wood and literally nothing else. Like... You move one space to the left, and you've immediately got a much better weapon in the form of the 20mm AA gun. More on that in a second. So, I have played with these a little bit, and they just do they just do not do enough damage. Their damage sucks. It's terrible. Even though uh, other weapons have, like, lower armor piercing, it's just not worth it. Don't bother with these things. They're good for, like, you know, just... They're aesthetics more than anything else. In fact, I think that's what they were originally designed for. It's just like, hey, you've got little machine guns to make your realistic boats look more realistic. Okay, so moving up to E tier, uh, we have the 16 and 32 pounder cannon. So that's uh, these fellas. Uh, right, whoops, I hands are off the line. So, got the 16 and 32 pounder. Uh, these guys, they're not quite F tier because they can kind of uh, scratch uh, enemy ships a little bit. Uh, they've got large kinetic damage, and they're cheap, and they're very spammable, which is the whole idea. There are only 200 materials uh, for the 16-pounder, 300 for the 32-pounder, and the kinetic damage is actually kind of substantial. It's uh, 2,000... Uh, I mean, you said $2,000. 2,000 uh, KD for the 16-pounder, and 3,500 uh, for the 32-pounder. So they do nasty things to wood. Uh, but uh, the cons are that it is... Uh, very inaccurate, so you can go down to see the dispersion degree is like one, so I believe that is for every meter traveled, it like it goes off target by one meter, which means they're terrible at long range. Um, and they've got low muzzle velocity, which makes them even worse at long range. So the muzzle velocity is shot is 150, uh, well 120 for the 16 pounder, 150. 
for the 32 pounder and it's got low AP so yes they do max damage to wood but again that's about it like against anything else they you know they can put a dent in it just through brute force uh, the amount of kinetic damage but like if you're playing the Nita campaign the only uh, faction which you're even gonna really touch uh, with these guys are like you know the deep water guard and some early onyx watchcraft like they're not good for anything else uh so yeah they're e-tier they're like they're not as bad as drills uh but they're not much better and also down in e here e-tier they're in good company so this one might be a controversial one it's the revolving blast gun uh this thing uh is hilarious because it basically just dumps a huge amount of like uh shells and then there's just, like a long reload time and i think actually you could make uh like essentially a bomber that uses this kind of thing and it would be, actually be kind of hilarious and fun so i'm not saying like this is a fun weapon but it's down in e tier because well 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 let me explain so pros are good uh, good burst damage and that's it so it spits out uh, like, a lot of shots. So the magazine capacity is like 300, but um, it fires 25 shells per shot, and 600 kinetic damage per shell, and like, it's, you know, it does a large amount of damage. So, yeah, like, you're gonna, like, shred lightly armored things, like, at short range very quickly. But getting onto the cons, like, it's a long list. So it's only effective at short range. Uh, the dispersal is uh, 7.5 degrees, which means that anything beyond, like, maybe... Maybe 700 meters. Um, like, yeah, like, you're not... You, most of them are gonna miss. And, yeah, it's got a very long reload time, 60 seconds. And these things, depending on... And this is possibly the main reason why this thing's down in uh, E-tier. Um, it's like, if your computer's not good enough, like, if you fire too many of these things at once, you can lag or even crash your game. So, <laughs> uh, this is definitely not something you want to overdo if you're uh, running a potato PC. So yeah, down in E-tier it is. Now moving up to D-tier, we have RAMs. Now, again, this might be a controversial one because some people make very good ramming craft, and this is by far the best melee option in the game because, firstly, it's simple, and it's tough. Like, it's, like, not actually as tough as, like, the drill bits uh, over here, but it is much, much cheaper, and, yeah, like, whenever you have a melee craft that is actually somewhat scary, uh, it's probably because it has these on it. Like, all the other options kind of suck. So, the drills, we already know they suck. Melee lasers, melee packs. Um, they're just not good because they require power. Uh, steam drills as well, they require power, they require materials. All rams need to do to inflict serious damage is, like, have the vehicle they're on move fast. Or, you can put it on a spin block, put some engine power in it, and suddenly you have, like, a buzzle, which is does a huge amount of damage. Um, but there are a lot of cons with this for them, and uh, you don't really see... I don't know, I don't think you really see rams being used in all-out tournaments and stuff like that, because it is a melee weapon, and melee in From the Depths is not very good, because all you need to do to avoid melee craft is be really fast, and, you know, railgun beats rams, quite frankly. And, um... Yeah, it is a melee option, and um, it's heavy for one thing, so, like, this is a one-block thing, and it's got a weight of 80, which uh, makes it, like, it's actually, it's since it's two meters long, it weighs the same as metal, but still, like, if you put a bunch of rams on the front uh, of your craft, you're gonna need to balance it out, because, you know, it does weigh things down a little bit. And you do have to design the entire vehicle around them, which is usually a sign that the weapon choice isn't very good. Crams actually have the same problem, uh, in that if you have a cram craft, you do need to design the entire vehicle uh, with, you know, getting, you know, getting it to a position where the cram cannon is useful. And other weapons don't have that problem. You can slap an APS on any kind of hull and it will still do a decent job. You can slap a laser on any kind of hull and it will still do a decent job, pretty much. 
because the weapon's not holding the craft back. So, Rams, D tier, just because, yes, there are situations where they can be uh, very good and do a huge amount of damage, but for the most part, like, you're not really gonna use them. Okay, so C tier. There's a few things in C tier, and uh, this might sound weird, but um, it's a melee option again. So, Tactical Nuke. Uh, the reason this thing is in C tier is because it does huge damage, and it is by far the simplest way to make a suicide craft, to make a kind of like little kamikaze missile or drone or something like that. And uh, this is something you actually have to keep in mind uh, when playing campaigns. You do need to have some kind of hitscan weapon uh, on your craft, because otherwise, um, nuke, nuclear suicide craft are actually going to be a serious problem for you, because they can be very small, they can be very fast, they can be very evasive, uh, unlike um, like rams, for instance, in which you do need um, kind of something a little bit more bulky for the most part, otherwise it doesn't do a lot of damage. Uh, this thing... Um, you can also do the kinetic, uh, like, um, kinetic ram craft, but I'm not sure that works anymore. Uh, but, uh, these things are a menace, and if you forget about them, they will ruin your day, because eventually, uh, in the campaign at least, you will run into, uh, this thing. You will run into the ICBM, and, uh, this thing is, uh, the kind of thing that will absolutely ruin your day, because... It'll just do that, and for some reason the thing never explodes um, properly. So, when I say that, uh, let's just do that, get rid of you, so on. And nukes do have some disadvantages, which is why they're just kind of mid-tier. Um, there's a lot of things with them. So firstly, they're expensive. They're 2,500 uh, materials. Uh, they're very heavy, so, you know, the craft you... If you put them at the front of your craft, you better make sure it has good pitch control, because otherwise it's just going to flop forward all the time. Uh, it requires specific vehicle design knowledge, so it's not actually that simple uh, to make one of these. Uh, it took me ages to figure out how to make a good kamikaze craft, so... Honestly, it's debatable about whether you can consider it a simple weapon, because it's actually... Even though it's just one block with a pretty, you know with a pretty straightforward premise. I mean, look, it explodes. In this case, it didn't explode properly because uh, I have God Mode on. Ha ha ha. Um, but yeah, so it's like... It, it's C tier because there are huge benefits but also huge drawbacks. And uh, to contrast with that, we have the Auto Cannons, which have, I don't know, kind of neat perks and kind of minor perks and minor drawbacks, let's say. So. Uh, you've got two flavors. Can you stop moving? Can you stop twerking? Okay, so... Firstly, the pros, they have... Well, both of them have decent damage and rate of fire. So if we hop into the build menu again, you can see the stats here. You've got the 30mm and 60mm autocannons. 60mm autocannon is the OG uh, simple weapon, along with rams and uh, simple lasers, by the way. Uh, they were there long before this uh, menu was expanded further. And, um... Yeah, so kinetic damage of 500, armor piercing of 4, which actually, even though that's a lot worse than this, in practice this does a lot better because it has a much better rate of fire, and it has a much better muzzle velocity. And there's no arc uh, to the projectile, which means it's much, 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 much better at hitting fast targets. And the 30mm autocannon is basically the same, except it does less damage and just fires a lot faster, and has slightly lower muzzle velocity. So I would say that the 60mm cannon is slightly better than the 30mm, and both of them have good damage, rate of fire, like I said, decent muzzle velocity. Uh, since the projectile doesn't arc, they can kind of aim better. But, like, you know, their shell, the muzzle velocity still isn't great. Uh, 500 meters per second is, like, kind of slow if you compare it to APS. Uh, uh, the AP is also kind of still low, so you're not going to really do much to metal. Um, so yeah, these are these are decent. They're like they're mid tier uh, for good reason. You can just if you have spare deck space, you can slap these down, and you know they'll do something at least. And uh, in a similar vein, uh, we're going to hop back over here uh, to the old timey uh, Age of Sail cannons type thing. So the 64 pounder cannon. Uh, is over here now, and these are much better than its uh, little brothers over here because 
Um, it has good kinetic damage, so it does slightly more than the 32 pounder. But it has much better muzzle velocity, so this is a piddly 150, this is a somewhat less piddly 400. And um, if you can't tell I'm reading off notes, it's got decent range as well, so I think the dispersion is the same, but the muzzle velocity is better. Also effective range is 2000, should have been mentioning that as well. And basically it just, it's a better version of these two, and like, really, there's not much point in using these two when you have this over here, because like this is just better in every single way and the cost is much worth it and it also has better armor piercing as well like 10 armor piercing means that it does about one quarter damage to a metal block and one quarter of 3600 let's just uh, see that right now that's still 900 so if you look here it's still gonna put a Neat little dent. In fact, it'll take half. It'll take half the health off a metal beam, assuming it's not stacked. So, it's not bad. It's mid tier. Um, but of course, there's still the slow fire rate, and the AP is still kind of low. It's uh, not the most effective thing to use against metal. And uh, where is the rate of fire? Reload time is 10 seconds, which is, I mean. Not bad, but it's not great either. Like, you're not going to be using these things a lot. By the way, uh, pretty much all simple weapons, unless um, otherwise mentioned, you might as well stick them on a turret or some kind of sub object. Uh, because they're, you know, they're just good for that. That just makes them far more useful. Okay, so that's C tier. And uh, moving on to B tier, here's our where, here is where things actually get kind of properly good and you would actually see them. Uh, if your simpler weapons are something you want to use a lot. Uh, we have the T-Class AA gun, which is this fella. And compared to the R-Class 50 cal, you might be wondering, like, hang on, so what's the, what's the, what's the difference here? Well, the main difference is that uh, this guy just spits out a lot more shells much more quickly. So, where is the rate of fire? Where is it? You're not... Reload time, blah blah blah, blah blah blah, it's not, doesn't actually appear to say uh, what the rate of fire is, but uh, I can tell you just from practical tests that this 20mm thing, it just, oh, it says on the thing, so rate of fire is 600, uh, rate of fire is 750 here, I don't know, like, there's slight differences between the two, but this just does a lot more damage, like, it just does a lot better like you can actually see like the difference it also has much much more health and uh, is much more durable uh, than the 50 cal and it's just like numbers don't appear much different although this does 200 kinetic damage even though the AP is worse it's just kind of better all around uh, so it's decent cheap kinetic damage you don't need a turret for it and it does have kind of low AP and it has short-ish range. So the effective range is 1260. Uh, so it's only 60 meters long, uh, be uh, better than the 50 cal. But hard to quantify it without showing it. And there's too many of these for it to show each of them off individually. Uh, but yeah, this is just better. We're like, we're up in B tier now. And also in B tier is the similar thing, uh, higher in B tier, I'd say, are these 40mm uh, AA guns, um, which are all kind of very similar, just on kind of on a spectrum of rate of fire versus reload. Uh, so we've got the double, we've got the quad, and we've got the octuple. And the great news is, is like this is kind of a mixture of kinetic and HE damage. They have built-in time fuses, and you can mix uh, these three different varieties for steady rate of fire and burst damage, and they also have good range. So over here you can see maximum range is 3,000 for all of them, and the damage for all of them is pretty much the same. So 300 kinetic damage with 5 AP, explosive damage of 89, and yeah, so these things make mincemeat of like a lot of light craft. And uh, they also kind of put a dent in uh, more armored stuff as well. Like uh, a battery of octuple uh, AA guns. Actually, you know, you can shred an Eerie with that, weirdly enough. It is kind of expensive, though. And um, that takes us straight to the cons. Um, the cons are is that this is like... It, they are kind of pricey. We're getting into the more expensive simple weapons. 
And yeah, they're not great against armor. They can manage uh, just because of um, their rate of fire and their decent kinetic damage. But yeah, but they're pretty good otherwise. Like um, they're not as resource efficient as just getting an APS to do similar things. But we're talking simple weapons here only. And yeah, so yeah, they're pretty good. Now we're moving up to A tier, and A tier is fun. So, in A tier we've got the simple laser, so... The main reason this thing's up in A tier is simply because it is the cheapest and simplest hitscan weapon in the entire game, and it does wonderful damage uh, for its cost, especially in the early game um, in Neater, when you're not actually running into anything that has laser defense, so... The damage per second is a thousand, and yeah, it just it does it does hit scan damage and good damage at that. The only things kind of holding it back are that it's got a short range, only 500 meters. It's got a long reload time, and it kind of has to charge up the shot first. Um, so reload time is about 10 seconds. 15 armor piercing is like about as good as simple weapons get uh, if they don't have custom shells. More on that in a second, and. Yeah. Also, they've been a uh, patch, so they're not as annoying sounding, which is very nice. So, can definitely recommend using these like um, as like very short range, uh, close in weapon defense. Uh, they can't shoot down projectiles, uh, but uh, they can make uh, mincemeat of flying squirrels, and that's very nice. Very nice. And to complement them, you have the shard cannon, which is also up in A tier. Uh, simply because it's got really good range. This is possibly the most recent addition to the Simple Weapon roster. It's, it does 1000 kinetic damage with 30 AP. Effective range is of 3000. And yeah, it fires like the shots. It does possibly the best damage out of everything in this upper row here in terms of projectiles at least. So yeah, like longest range, best AP of no all non-custom shell Simple Weapons. The con is, is that it is kind of pricey for what it does, it costs the same as this twin 40mm uh, AA gun. And it's got a long-ish reload and it's got a slow fire rate, so it fires off three shots. And then has to sit and think about it for about 10 seconds. But a, I have tested these, and again, they're surprisingly decent ducker for um, something that is just, you know, essentially just... How many blocks is this? This is just... It is also quite a volume... Uh, heavy. This is occupying like uh, six blocks, uh, not including the barrel over there. Um, so yeah, they take up a little bit more room, but aside from that, they're pretty damn good. Like a ship armed uh, with nothing but shard cannons can actually just put out decent damage against most things. Uh, but uh, for the absolute cream of the crop, and yeah, by process of elimination, you knew that where this was going, is uh, the custom shell simple weapon. So that's uh, in order here. We have the grenade launcher. We have the uh, Type A 3.7 inch gun, 94 millimeters, and then we have the armored version of the 3.7 inch gun. Then we have the 130 millimeter casemate gun and the 150 millimeter dual casemate gun. And these are the best simple weapons, just hands down, just because they use custom shells. So if you go here, maybe a shell selection, you can just do groovy things like this and you know just match the shell to the thing and do that I guess and you can just customize these however you like so basically these are uh, APS for people who haven't quite figured out APS yet or just like very volume efficient APS so to speak so they're essentially APS prefabs with all the advantage of APS. Uh, they have built-in laser targeters for timed fuses, and you don't need a turret block with them, so these can potentially be customized to shoot at anything you like. Like, you put... You know, you could probably cruise all the way through Need to Campaign on, like, regular difficulty just using these armed with uh, Super Cavitation uh, APS shells. Like... That's... I, I can easily see people doing that. Um, which means that not only are they best option for simple weapons, they're also better than things like cram cannons in terms of just versatility and usability. And there are some downsides to them. Uh, they are kind of expensive, so the cheapest one is the grenade launcher, which is only 250 
um, 250 materials, but immediately after that you get to uh, probably some re some really expensive stuff. So 2,000, 2,500, 2,500, 3,500, uh, which to give you an impression of like how expensive that is. Like uh, you're probably better off. Uh, for the same DPS, you can build an APS system that is cheaper than this, even if it uses more volume. So, yeah. Um, but yeah, they're still great, and they're S-tier. Like, I don't see a reason why they wouldn't be. And also, I should mention as well that the grenade launcher does have a kind of a long reload. So, you go here, you see the reload time... What? That is not the reload time. It takes longer than that to reload. Oh yeah, the magazine reload time is 60 seconds, so the grenade launcher is definitely the worst one. Uh, but yeah, that does it for the simple weapon tier list. Let me know if you agree slash disagree with any of these. Uh, let me know if there's something I've missed, like a detail about uh, one or some of these weapons that changes where they would be in the tier list um we can definitely all agree that drills suck because seriously i never see people use them so that'll do uh, for now thank you all so much for watching please like comment subscribe if you want to see more videos like this support me on patreon or youtube membership if you like it really helps and there's fun perks in it for you thank you to all my current supporters and i will see you next time in from the depths farewell